Young Surgeon Forum in Arthroplasty. And we have with us our star speaker, Dr. Rajkumar Nathison from Ganga Hospital. And we have our conveners, Dr. Anup and Dr. Jaisha. And we are grateful to them for organizing this event with the case present uh, presenters. And we welcome everybody to you, everybody to the meeting. And I hand it over to Anu for further proceedings. Over to you, Anu. Thank you, Dr. Sham. Uh, so again, I welcome all the viewers uh, to this much-awaited uh, complex primary episode number eleven of the Young Surgeons Forum. And today we'll be dealing with the most common problems that we face, uh, even as trauma surgeons or as joint replacement surgeons as in patients with post-traumatic scenarios, that is post-neck femurs, failed ITs, or acetabular fractures. And who better than Dr. Rajkumar to give us an overview of how to tackle these uh, post-traumatic scenarios. He's a senior joint replacement consultant from Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, who has seen almost everything under the sun. So without much ado, it's all over to you, sir. And uh, you may please uh, throw some light on the topic. Yep. Uh, good evening to everyone and uh, I would like to thank uh, Anup and Ashok for inviting me and organizing such a fantastic uh, program and uh, the two are like almost like a one-to-one -one, uh, discussion sort of program which is really need of the hour because since a lot of uh, physical uh, meetings are not happening as it was before so these kind of webinars in a big number also was not helping but this kind of closed group uh, meeting, I think it will help not only the uh, young surgeons, it also will help a lot of uh, other busy practicing surgeons to fine tune their skills. So once again, I would like to thank uh, for inviting me and the opportunity. Uh, Anup, uh, how shall we go? Shall we go ahead with the, uh, this thing about the topic? So you can start. Uh, presenting the topic, the brief uh, for these three different scenarios uh, for the first 45 minutes, then we'll have a discussion on the same with some points that we need to discuss, okay. uh, which will be uh, an interactive discussion. Yeah. And then we'll follow it up with the two cases that we have. Okay, right. So, um, so can I can I know who are all the surgeons here uh, just to introduce uh, themselves? Yeah, so we have uh, Dr. Jay Shah. He's the other co-convener with me. Okay. And the presenters for today are Dr. Jayesh Baviskar from Mumbai okay. and Dr. Ankur Singhal. He is from Raipur. Done. Okay, right. Good. They would be presenting the cases. They both will present cases. Yes. Okay. So let me. Uh, so I'm. I there are there are so many talks uh, available in uh, YouTube and everywhere about this totally preplacements in uh, THR, uh, totally preplacement in post traumatic situation. Uh, so I initially thought of giving something like that, but then I, I felt that I should uh, give, I should present few cases by myself and then I will, I have compiled a few cases, all my own cases uh, and I will take you through all those cases and we will, I will see if I can cover the topic which has been uh, planned for today. So one second, yeah. Can I share the screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, right. The
sorry uh one second it's somehow my What is the problem, sir? Oh, we can't hear you. Uh, you're muted. Jay, can you unmute, uh, sir? Uh, just unmuting one. So can you tell us what? Yes. Huh? So what so is the issue that you are facing? What is the issue? No, uh, my screen sharing is not uh, happening. One second. Can we start with the cases till the time? Yeah, yeah. Poonam, please make uh, Dr. Rajkumar as co-host. Allow Zoom to share your screen. It says allow. Okay, open. Okay, the moment you are made the co-host, I guess it will work. What is yeah, that? Just, just, just try now. Now, now please. Sorry, uh, I think uh, you can, uh, in, in a minute, I will just. Uh. Can I can I leave for a, just a second and uh, one minute and then come back if it is okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, sorry about that. No problem. No problem. So Anup, meanwhile, you can you and Jay can give us more overview about the topic and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. No problem. So so basically, we are going to deal with uh, uh, neck femurs, post failed ITs, and. Um, uh, acetabular fractures. Now, in neck femurs, basically, we are we are talking about uh, young physiological patients, age independent, maybe sixty to seventy years as well, but very active. And then people are expected to outlive their uh, life with the joint. Therefore, the concept of uh, using a total hip rather than a bipolar hemiarthroplasty. And then the, comes the concept of uh, uh, dual mobility in these cases where the, the joint is lax. And that is what causes some amount of instability post-operative in the total hip scenario. Hence, dual mobility uh, came up a big way, especially in neck femur fractures. Uh, though the rider is that uh, you need to know uh, your, your patient quite well. Uh, you need to know what are the sizes available with the dual mobility uh, you need to know uh, what is the, the, the kind of bone quality that you have and what additional fixations would be required uh, in some companies. So I guess those are the points that we need to keep in mind with uh, dual mobility. Then when we talk about uh, failed IT fractures, uh, most of them have been uh, the DHS with a screw cut out uh, with screw impaled into the joint uh, and also post-infective scenarios. Uh, in, in, in IT fractures. So all of them have uh, led to either implant being uh, flawed or the fractures not uniting or you have infection. I guess these are very, very common conditions that we face. And uh, based on this, we need to take a call as to what is the type of stem design that we use because the proximal femoral uh, morphology or anatomy is distorted 
and that's where we are going to discuss uh, that's what we are going to discuss today so what will be the best stem selection uh, in most fail it's uh, where you don't have a lot of disturbance or distortion of the acetabulum i think the debate is on how do you get your stem well fixed i think that is the 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 thing that we will be discussing post acetabular fractures completely a different uh, ball game here you have got scenarios where uh, people uh, usually wait uh, for fractures to gum up and then uh, when the patient throws up with a secondary arthrosis post traumatic people opt for a primary complex primary total hip that is one scenario the other scenario is the patients are having a displaced acetabular fractures and they are fixed and then the head goes in a vascular necrosis or there's an entity called rapid degenerative osteoarthrosis in which the head basically collapses because of marginal blood vessels being impaled because of the trauma so these two conditions are are uh, are conditions which lead to post traumatic uh, uh, arthrosis of the hip and then we have to basically try and fit in the cup and that's where the debate comes in acetabular fractures so it's not the femoral side but the acetabular component that is uh, uh, you need to have a conscious thought of where do you place and what do you place uh, uh, or what additional implants will you use what are the previous implants or metal work that will come in your way i guess that is the thought process that you have so in failed it's it's mainly on the femoral side uh, on the acetabular side it's basically uh, in the post acetabular fracture scenario <clears throat> <laughs> so when we talk of neck femurs yeah i th- i think jay you can come in yeah so uh, you know for all these uh, yeah so i have a question for you jay for uh, neck femur fractures so how will you decide when to go for dhr or bipolar we are we are, we are still seeing lot of people doing bipolars in yeah. especially in elderly in in india in places in rural rural places so let so, me know your thought Uh, the standard teaching and what uh, people would say goes is that if your patient is physiologically young, uh, you know you don't consider age as just a number. You know you see how much he's doing activities. If he's going out in the community without a stick, he's going to work, driving a car, he's quite active, and he's uh, you know. Any score or criteria to decide that? So, but I've heard logic. Do you use any score or any criteria to decide the physiological age? Uh, or... so there are scores uh, which are there, but a lot of them are sometimes not uh, uh-huh. something you can do. In your do. clinical practice, in your clinical uh, practice, I don't end up using scores so often because a lot of the questions, uh, you know, when you ask the patients, they have no answer to, it. and then okay. just uh, you know, you don't get a score which is accurate. So. Uh, but a patients who are younger you know maybe in their early 60s maybe late 60s if they are very active uh, you can consider total hip uh, of course to debate that there are papers recently uh, which are in the gbjs uh, etc which say that a bipolar uh, has equal functional outcomes to a total hip uh, longevity of the bipolar is what then gets questioned Uh, as to whether you know you should do a bipolar in these patients or do a total hip for these patients, you know. But uh, yes, that is a question which is still being debated. I think it has been debated over the last so many decades, and there is still no um, clear answer as to you know when to do a bipolar versus when to do a total hip. Yeah, my 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 take on that is um, it, it's it's almost uh, never never bipolar or never total hip. It's it's never uh, either or. uh what what i think is uh, you should not be using a bipolar um in in rheumatoid or or uh, inflammatory arthrosis one uh, because you invariably are going to have a problem most of the patients who are uh, operated with a, a bipolar uh, especially in secondary uh, inflammatory arthritis they do not do well okay so that will be one scenario that you should not be using a bipolar secondly if you are uh, expecting a patient to be extremely osteoporotic don't use a bipolar so those those are uh, situations where actually you would, you would be better off with a total hip uh, dual mobility is oversold uh, i mean you can get away with uh, a, a well positioned uh, total hip uh, with with fixed bearing rather than a dual mobility as well but if the patient wishes to 
have a you know increased jump distance or increased enhanced range of motion only then would you consider a dual mobility so i don't think uh, the issue is is um, is about whether you want to do a bipolar or a total hip yes that, that's that's true but if the patient wishes to have an active lifestyle uh, for for a long, longer period of maybe maybe more than 10 to 15 years total hip is what will be the recommended surgery What's even, even in a 70 year old yeah. even in a 70 year old active patient so i i don't think that should be a criteria so age as a number itself i don't think is uh, a criteria anymore Probably right. sometimes end up seeing patients who are, you know, in their late 60s, maybe 70, but they are so poor physiologically that, you know, they probably just need a spacer type of an implant, you know, just to get them active, just at least they're in the house walking around. So bipolar would work fine for them, you know, especially if they have got multiple issues and, uh, you know, they may not outlive, you know, their, their, their implant. Another factor which in India comes into play also is the cost at times. So, you know, I've got, I've, I've had patients who have actually refused a total hip replacement because of the cost. And despite trying whatever I could to bring the cost down, you know, they just say no. So, that's the, I think the so other, other aspect of uh, you know, dual mobility that is still. Uh, uh, dual mobility has been on the market for quite some time now, but uh, there are few long-term papers that are yet yet to come. The issue is about backside wear, and um, basically you've got it's a tripolar, so you've got a socket, and then you've got the polyethylene which is rolling inside, and you have the uh, of the uh, of the cup uh, metallic head or ceramic head which is placed inside. So the issue is about the backside wear because you've got two different interference surfaces that are uh, that are rubbing. So once we have long-term data, I think um, it will work well. Yeah. Uh, so but I would still wait and watch. Would the jump distance change with the 22 head versus the 28 head in um, a dual mobility? Because those are the two options you have. And a lot of the Indian women especially neck femurs, they have small uh, sizes on the acetabulum. So a lot of the times, depending on the implant that you use, you know, you're stuck with a 22 head option. And, you know, then in that case, 22 or 22 head dual mobility or are you getting a 28 head in a regular THR for that patient? I think Sir is joined and Sir can probably shed uh, much more light with his experience on that. So, can we go ahead with the case first? Yeah, yes, I think we can. Uh, yeah, no problem. Can we start? Uh, can I? Okay. okay. I think Rajkumar sir is back. Yeah, I, so, I just borrowed my daughter's laptop and connecting to that. Sure. Uh, can, okay, now. Yeah, we can see the presentation. See your screen, sir. All right. Thank you. At last. Okay. Okay. Right. So, uh, see, I I have compiled a few cases on uh, basically post traumatic scenario. There are, uh, as Anup said, there are few uh, situations. The first situation is a. Uh, very, very classic situation is a neck of femur fracture uh, where you do a cancellous screw fixation and then that goes for AVN and then that goes for a secondary arthritis. That is the most common situation where we uh, encounter arthritis, post-traumatic arthritis. That is one. Second thing is fractures around the joint. So that is either in the femoral head fracture or the acetabulum fracture. This is the second scenario where you uh, develop arthritis, where in this situation, the arthritis is pretty quick. The arthritis comes in a year or a two within a very short period of it. It's not a, it's almost like a primary arthritis, unlike a avian. The third situation is a trochanteric fracture, fixation done with a lot of implants, a variety of implants, and then that implant either fails and then goes into an arthritis or implant doesn't fail, but still arthritis sets in. So these are the most common three situations. So one is the acetabulum, the next is the femoral head and the neck. 
issue and then the trochanteric region. So invariably, as we all know that uh, arthritis, whether it is due to neck problem or astablum problem or due to trochanter, we need a THR because the patient is, needs a painless uh, mobility. So we all know that it needs a THR invariably to the age, whether the age is younger, middle age or older age. So in that way, we have to be very clear that THR is the only solution for that. But the whole idea of learning and discussing this topic here should be how and when to do, when and how to do a hip replacement to avoid complications. Complications in the sense in uh, infection related complications and surgical related complications. So these are the two aspects we have to deal with in this whole uh, uh, discussion. So in a post-traumatic situation, how we are going to plan for the surgery and how we are going to execute the surgery and avoid complications perioperative and postoperatively and achieve a good result. So this should be our agenda and aim to achieve good result. So based on this, I will try to, uh, I have uh, compiled a few cases. So those cases will actually take us through certain points. Okay, so I will go through one by one and Anup, whenever the time is almost there over my, my time is over, please let me know. Yes, because yes. I have compiled a quite a uh, big number of cases. So sure. whenever you are uh, saying, I will stop. Okay, so sure. this is the first, uh, first case which I have put here. So what is this case? Look at the case. Uh, that is a old trauma and some uh, osteotomy has been done for that fracture and a very, very angled blade plate, uh, uh, very, very uh, odd plate, which has been used many years back. So because of this very old fracture, then malunion, then this uh, different kind of a plate, look at the trochanter here, look at the abductors, look at how much the head has been, lat uh, whole trochanteric region has been lateral. So what is the problem? Even if you look at the opposite uh, hip, you can see the amount of coxa where the patient has got. So, so in this in this situation, you need to know how we are going to deal with the lateralized uh, trochanter, how we are getting your offset. So here we all know that it needs a THR. No doubt about it. So on the astablum side also reasonably okay that you are going to not going to have much of problem on the astablum side because there is no fracture. So here we have to look at the offset the abductors and how we are going to remove the implants. So is there a question here to see whether we need to do an aspiration or anything like that? No, that all those are all now old school of thought. So here the issue is if the blood parameters are normal, which rules out the basic uh, uh, infection point of view, then we have to address the issues related to the offset, abductors, implant removal and screws. So what I have done, so here I have removed the implant. So you have to be prepared for removal of the implant. So you have to have all the kit ready for removal of like broken screw removal kit. Then you have to uh, have some good uh, levering out instruments uh, to lever out this uh, angled blade plate. Then you need to address the screw hole. So the screw holes has to be bypassed here. So here what I have used, I have used the shortest distal fitting stem that is the Wagner 190 stem. And then with, you can see that uh, even though I have gone a little high hip center in this situation, but still I have put the cup in the good bone, wherever the good bone is available. And also I have achieved the offset by selecting this distal fitting stem. So this distal fitting stem comes with a uh, reasonably a good offset, like the minimum starting offset itself is 40. So in that way, I was able to achieve the uh, soft tissue tension and by getting a distal fitting stem, I was able to bypass the screw holes and also we have to be very careful with the entry point because your the trochanter is not very much available there. So you have to make sure for that you have to use a CM. If your entry is doubtful, then use a CM. So these are the uh, small points in relation to this case and this patient is doing well. The next case, if you see, the next case is again a 15-year-old male 
post trauma so common situation post acetabular fracture particularly a posterior wall fracture you will see patients coming with these kind of plates in the posterior aspect and with that because of that patient develops post traumatic arthritis protrusio all these things so in this situation again no doubt about that thr is a must so only thing is here you have multiple things one is a protrusio one is arthritis one you have implants so what to do so your big question will be whether to remove the implant and then go ahead and do a thr but if, uh, for all practical purposes make it as a point if you have ruled out infection and if you see feel that the screws will not come into your way of your reaming then you need not remove the implant so how to do uh, judge that you can take a ct scan and make sure that the screws are not coming into the um, joint line joint area where you are going to reap so if that is the case then you need not remove the screws so but you should be prepared some screws may 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 be you have to remove the screws during the surgery but altogether you don't need to remove the uh, implant routinely if there is no signs of infection so here i have done a bone graft the head is there so we have done a bone grafting to lateralize the cup so the screw was not removed the plate was not removed patient underwent a regular uncemented total hip replacement by addressing all the principles of protrusion next is a, this is a third situation again a very common situation dhs implant uh, uh, put for various fractures even neck of femur fractures undergo dhs in many places so that is this is almost like a, it is like a for a neck of femur fracture they have put a dhs but look at the plate where the plate is the plate is almost very anterior so that is one thing and the second thing is very long dhs plate almost like if you see a four hole plate the key situation point here is you stay, have to take a proper lateral view just see the lateral view how much of bowing is there for this case so in this situation you have to be prepared to put uh, address this bowing so what the problem is so all the distal loading stems is a straight stem it is not a bowed stem a cobalt chrome stem has got a long bowed stems but in a uh, distal loading short distal loading like wagner 190 225 stems are all not a curved stem it are all straight stems so these straight stems when you put in then it is very very you have to be careful so this is a case where a straight stem has been put because of that a periprosthetic fracture which had to be wired and whenever there is a situation like that check it under cm so even though the it's patient has, so even though the patient has underwent a regular uncemented total hip replacement of the removal of the dhs implant because of the severe bowing on the of the proximal femur area we are you uh, while using a distal loading stem there is a periprosthetic fracture for which wiring has been done but the point here is all these kind of situations you have to cross the screw holes because multiple near screw holes very very near to each other when you don't use a distal fitting stem the chances of periprosthetic fracture is very high so the next is 76 year old male uh, diabetic had a slip and fall so this was the fra- tri- uh, fixation done immediate uh, post operative period one month follow up Three months follow. Up. Obviously, it has started failing because it's more of like an unstable fracture. A uh, wrong implant has been used because of that. Uh, the uh, implant failed. The fracture didn't unite, and this is how it has finally. So look at this case. So again, this is not a simple, straightforward uh, implant removal. Why? Because the all the screws are broken now. So you have to have all the uh, uh, instruments to remove this. without doing this uh, removal of that broken in, uh, screws you cannot do a total hip replacement you have to remove that so for that what you have to do you have to have some special trefines which you can uh, trefine you can make a drill over the screw uh, broken screws gently so that you don't make a very big hole if you make a very big hole then the whole area will fracture once you start doing a thr so you have to be very careful so gently remove you have to spend some time so make sure you are ruling out infection and then once that is done inform the anesthetist that it will take quite a long time because of the implant removal make sure you are having an epidural adequate blood is arranged 
tell the patient that sometimes you might have difficulty in removal and then you might need to do it as a two stage all these things is important in a pre operative planning so counseling of the patient and the anesthetist is important so here after removal luckily i was able to remove all the screws broken screws and uh, uh, th these are all little older x rays where i used to use this cobalt chrome but now i don't use this cobalt chrome stems anymore so this is a distal loading stem again and uh, patient was osteoporotic but uh, the sorry uh, the because of the screw holes a long distal loading stem was used so the key points in that case is that broken screws has to be removed but they has to be removed carefully gently without making very huge holes because that will cause fracture again this is again common 77 year old short pfns used uh, and because of the osteoporosis it fails and also cut, cuts through the neck and the head and the key thing here is it is been it will be neglected when the patient comes to you you can see that the screw has eroded the ostabulum so you have to be prepared so that area it, now the ostabulum is quite big so you need to be prepared for the addressing that situation also so here you have to have no what system it is you need to have the appropriate screw removal because these are all pfna2 that uh, helical blade that uh, uh, helical screw that uh, uh, screwdriver uh, it cannot be removed by routine screwdriver so you need a special correct appropriate uh, screw removal uh, instrument to remove that so you have to discuss know the what the company is and then order for that removal set and then go ahead don't hesitate to use the cm this is how if you look at the cm the huge uh, void there because of the screw damaging the ostabulum so i had to graft that area completely with the whatever allo graft i had then cemented so why you might wonder why i have used a cemented uh, cup in this situation in this situation if you look at the opposite hip see how small is the cup how small is the ostabulum so in this situation always remember indian females particularly asian females very very obese uh, females or uh, uh, old age the ostabulum will be soft osteoporotic so sometimes and particularly in these kind of post traumatic situations you will be it will be very difficult to get in a very big cup uncemented cup the uh, uh, fixation won't be that good enough so you will not have a very rigid fixation so don't hesitate to use a cemented cup in these kind of old age osteoporotic patients no problem at all in using a cemented cup you can use a cemented cup and then these kind of distal loading stem so it's a reverse hybrid thr one more example for that so again old age patient 70 this patient is also more than 75 years old see the uh, uh, fracture you have to identify this fracture unstable fracture highly unstable patient underwent uh, intramedullary nailing with screws but still the hold was not good see the size of the acetabulum how small it is the page this patient was very very short patient then in this in this situation it was referred and uh, i had to remove the implant because her esr crp was high so i had to remove the implant give some time take some cultures and then once everything was negative see 78 year old female this patient failed internal fixation small ostabulum again a reverse uh, hybrid th this patient is doing well almost now 10 years since this has been done and she is really doing well so this reverse hybrid or whatever it is you have to deal you have to use the appropriate uh, whether cemented or uncemented appropriate implants based on the patient's needs so look at the osteoporosis look at the ischium how osteoporotic this be even though the femur looks the cortex looks good if you look at the ostabulum area look at the ischium so how osteoporotic soft 78 year old and the small ostabulum so reverse hybrid has been used so the next is trochanteric again one more ostabulum fracture 72 year old rta ostabulum fracture one month old fixation this patient was here this patient had a fixation elsewhere and came to me with foot drop and diabetes so i had to control the diabetes severe arthritis within a very short period of time within few months he developed this arthritis so he is very painful so we have to go uh, see the situation four months post uh, fixation within four months he has developed severe arthritis so at three months and five months the esr crp was quite reasonably okay and uh, the doubt here is that uh, the doubt here is whether to do an aspiration but here 
At four, three months, the patient CRP was okay, ESR was okay, but CRP was slightly elevated, uh, going up. ESR is 70, and uh, diabetic patients already once operated elsewhere. So that's why I did the aspiration. Two stage or a single stage, because the aspiration had no growth and the culture sensitivity no growth, the extended culture sensitivity also no growth. I went ahead and did the single stage uh, THR. Uh, but in this situation, look at the implant. The implant was coming on the way. This, this big uh, plate uh, almost was sitting over, over the femoral head. So that was the problem. That was the reason for the quick arthritis. Within four months, why this patient developed arthritis? The whole head was articulating with the implant. It was uh, rubbing on the plate. So that means the placement of the plate was not correct. So I had to remove the, cut the plate and remove the, that part of the plate which was uh, over the astablum and then packed with a lot of bone graft with the, water, the femoral head what I had. So, so here, this is almost like a partial removal of that implant and then I went ahead and did the primary hip replacement with the coral stem and a uh, uh, third generation hemispherical cup, uncemented hemispherical cup. So this patient is doing well now. So the, what are the learning points in this case? A post-traumatic situation with the implants in situ already operated elsewhere. If the patient's blood parameters are slightly on the higher side, doubtful infection, then you can go ahead and do a aspiration. So what is the point in aspiration? Aspiration, whenever you are doing an aspiration, don't inject any saline if you get a dry tap. If you get a dry tap, take a bone, uh, try to take some few bone pieces or tissues and then send culture, but don't inject saline and try to send that saline, aspirate that saline and send it for culture. No way that is proper and you will not get any organism. So do a aspiration if you are, if it is possible and do a in theater inoculation of that aspirated fluid into the culture medium bottle and then do an extended culture. Don't leave it for only three days, leave it for 14 days to grow, have some organism. So that is the point. Uh, learnt in that case. The next case, 75-year-old male, history of fall from bed. One week after this, he consulted the local surgeon. Local surgeon did some blood parameters, how to manage. So patient, he had put, a, see, the patient already had a astablum fracture. 15 days post-injury, he was put on a distal tra femur traction by the surgeon there. So this patient was in the bed with the traction for six weeks. And this is how it is. Four months post-injury, he came to me. So I had to take all the uh, necessary views and CT scan to assess the quality of the bone. Because in this situation, they, it was he was lying down for a long period of time. We don't know how the column and uh, walls are. So here, luckily, the column was quite reasonably okay. Only the wall, medial wall, there was a lot of... Uh, um, damage to the medial wall. So there is almost like a protrusia kind of situation. So this is a seven months post injury. So in this situation, again, since the column was intact, the wall was reasonably uh, okay, even though it was thin, but it was uh, available, the wall was there. So I had to address the protrusia problem here. I had, uh, luckily the head was there. So I used that head for bone grafting, then lateralized to the femur and then, sorry, astablum and then did the primary uh, total hip replacement. So in this situation, sometimes if you see a very comminuted central fracture dislocations also, uh, you don't need to do a lot of platings, put a lot of plates. I used to tell the trauma surgeons that just for achieving some good x-rays, don't try to put so many screws and plates in the astablum. That itself will cause arthritis. Somewhere some screws will go into the joint one point, Second, if any arthritis sets in, it is very difficult to remove the screws and the plates. That itself is a big procedure. And then that will cause some uh, nerve damage and all those things. So try to keep it minimal. And uh, these kind of central fracture dislocations, central fractures, you don't need to do too much. You just sometimes if it is so comminuted, allow it to heal by itself. It will all like a bag of bones, it will heal. Only thing is you need some sort of traction for some time. And then they, later on you can do uh, uh, totally replacement after a few months or maybe even a year later. So this is the next uh, case, history of fall. Again, a trochanteric fra intertrochanteric fracture in a patient who is a rheumatoid, known diabetes. He underwent this fracture fixation in Saudi Arabia. 
So this is a three months post fixation, severe pain. It's very obvious. The fracture didn't unite. It's a non-union with the loosening of the implants. So much of combination there in the uh, postromedial aspect. So this patient came to India. So what to do now? So here is the most important crux. What is that? So in this situation, as a surgeon, arthroplasty surgeon, you have to take the right decision. So what is the decision here? The patient is already diabetic, hypertensive, 72 years. Do you think one more uh, fixation, one more uh, uh, internal fixation will help in this case? No. Even though we are all arthroplasty surgeons and we will say, everybody knows that we will say it is always a THR. But if it is indicated, you have to say THR. No point in telling that, oh, for sake of telling or to impress someone, we should say, we will, I will try an in, one more uh, internal fixation. No. So this is not a situation for an internal fixation. Why, once again, why? Because of the old age, diabetes, you need to give him one straightforward, one surgery, which will solve all the problems here. But what has happened? Another surgeon in India, he decided the other way. What did he do? He again did the DHS with a long plate and bone grafting. Look at that. Immediate, this is an immediate post-operative X-ray. Look at the damage to the femoral head already has happened during this. See how much of big void is there. So much of bone graft has been used. And again, he has used a DHS implant. Wrong surgery, wrong implant. Everything has gone wrong in this. So it is almost like we all say, you no, know, day one failure. This is like that. So within two months, this has happened. So it has failed. So the, it again, non-union. Now patient has already underwent two major procedures in the age of 72, diabetic, rheumatoid arthritis patient and came to me. So what else to do? You have to do rule out infection. So I have ruled out all that took the blood parameters. Only CRP was 9.9 .9 ESR 48, WBC 6000. HB1C was 7.4, reasonably okay. So aspiration two stage, single stage. Here, since the parameters were normal, I went ahead and did a single stage total hip replacement. Look at this X-ray. Now, again, long DHS plate was removed, screws were removed. Because of that, I have used a long distal loading stem, uh, titanium, Wagner stem, and a hemispherical third generation uncemented cow with two screws. But what is the most important point here? Patient always underwent, sorry, patient already underwent two uh, procedures before, trauma procedures, bone grafting, diabetic. So in this situation, you have to send, while doing a THR, you have to send the tissues for culture. That is the most important thing. Always, whether, even though the blood parameters are normal, always, almost always, you have to send tissues for culture, make it as a routine. So see here, one year follow. But the point is, the tissue which I had sent came out to be a coagulase negative staphylococcus during the surgery. So what do, this is called as unsuspected periprosthetic joint infection. You don't, you didn't suspect infection. You did have a single stage uh, THR, implant removal and THR, but it there's turned out to be some growth in the culture sensitivity. What to do? So you have to give antibiotics. So you have to treat this patient post-operatively two weeks of IV antibiotics and four, three to four weeks of oral antibiotics. So duration is at least a month of antibiotics is a must. So that is the learning point in that case. 68 year old male. This is a quickly I'll go through again. Look at the how unstable is this? It's so obvious. So, so obvious that this fracture is a very, very highly unstable fracture, but the pay surgeon has done a THR, uh, the DHS with just three screws. So this is a wrong implant has been used. So ideally this case should have been used a intramedullary device, but uh, the DHS, it has failed two months follow up, seven months follow up. What to do now? So now from that uh, previous learning point, here the DHS implant is also broken. So what to do? Such a uh, unstable fracture, very, very low trochanter. It's almost subtrochantric region, the fracture is. So in this case, see what the surgeon decided the other way. This surgeon, he what he did, he removed the DHS and did a bipolar, but that too not a fully cemented. He only used to cement proximally, just proximally, he has used the cement. 
that is totally not correct it is absolutely not correct at all such a obese patient unstable trochanteric fracture he has used his patient is only 58 year old so this situation again you know that this is going to fail see look at this this is a one year follow up down after the bipolar patient came with broken stem loosened implant lot of pain so now thr is a must again do all the investigations if the investigations is not normal if the signs of infection then do an aspiration otherwise you can remove the implant and then go ahead and do a thr so here a modular sorry a modular uh, femoral component was used and an uncemented thr was done next case 64 year old male road traffic accident patient is also underwent had a uh, spinal fracture so this is how a nonstabular fracture was there femoral head fracture was there the surgeon uh, there uh, did a uh, safe surgical dislocation like he has done an trochanteric osteotomy then he did a posterior so much of plates again look at the plates and screws he has you long screws and then some small plates and spine was also fixed and within 3 months of the post uh, obstabular fracture the patient had severe pain developed arthritis and when he came he came to me in this situation so look at this x-ray whenever you see an x-ray with a lot of implants take some time take proper x-rays before jumping in and taking ct first of all look at the x-ray and see what all the implants are being used take all the jude views where the implants are where the screws are whether it is into the joint so in this situation if you see see the plate that small plate what they have used here and the key point again here is the amount of bone has that has grown over this plate so if you you should anticipate that there is lot of bone overgrowth over the plate so that is the most here and you have to classify the osteobular bone loss how much of bone loss is there and then you have to do a ct in this situation why you need to know where the screws are going where that bone is so look at the screws so you the if you open definitely you cannot view, visualize the screws because that bone has grown uh, some bone has grown like almost like a, it's it is an heterotrophic ossification where that bone has grown over the screws and plates so when i opened that is the see here all this there is a defect in the posterior wall so you the ct will help you so the preoperative planning is very important so that ct and all the blood administration done we know where the defect is so i went ahead so multiple things so i went ahead did the uh, removed the uh, heterotrophic ossification removed the plates i had to address the posterior wall and again the key point here is the trochanteric screws which they have used the head was gone so i had to use a intraoperatively i used i had to use a head a, a broken head removal screws screw system screw removal system avos i i have in my theater the avos uh, broken head screw removal system i used that and i used an augment for the uh, defect and finally he underwent a primary total replacement with augments and an uh, third generation hemispherical scrub uh, uh, cup with screws so this patient is doing well so the point here is pre operative planning is necessary whenever you see lot of screws in the hip you make sure you are having the appropriate the screw removal set you should have allograft if you don't have a bone then you should have allografts and also don't hesitate to put screws into the uh, uncemented cup if the bone is osteoporotic so these are the points take home message always do a ct if you feel there are screws otherwise you don't need a ct majority of the time you can classify with the primary uh, regular x rays 50 next case 56 year old male trivial fall alcoholic fracture fixation in done one year back outside again failed severe pain in the left hip what next unable to walk without any support 8 months so for long this much of period the patient was the surgeon was making the patient wait wait let it will unite it will at one point of time you have to take a decision you should not keep on waiting that will cause lot of problems so implant removal done at the so the surgeon what he did he just removed the implants so he wanted to do one more surgery he just removed the implants and he left same hospital and this is how the patient came to me in this situation so why can't this decision was taken even before immediately when he 
decide when he thaw, saw that the patient fracture is not united. So that time itself, some decision whether a refixation or a THR. So this in this situation, patient head is already gone because the neck area because of the loose screws, the bone has been uh, so a lot of lysis, so much of bone has gone. So here, if you go and try to do an internal fixation again, you will not get a good hole in the neck and head. The chance of failure is very high again. So I had to. Uh, I went ahead and did a total hip replacement. So the problem here is again the scars. So you have to be very careful. Blood parameters normal. So I did a prophylactic wiring. Why? Because see here, there's so much of uh, big holes in that loose screws has created. Two big screws, uh, which was loose for a long time, has created a big uh, hole here. So in this situation, you have to be very careful before putting in your original implant. So I do a prophylactic wiring during in that area where just below the screw uh, holes and then and did a distal loading, uncemented distal loading uh, titanium stem. This is a read up stem from by Smith and Nephew and then again a uncemented hemispherical cup. This is a uh, post-operative x-ray. This is the post-operative x-ray. So the point here is the decision of non-union and how what to do next has to be taken at the time when you see a non-union or a implant failure. 57 year old female, male, neck of femur fracture, left side, chronic alcoholic, he had a slip and fall. Look at the fracture pattern here, how vertical it is. And where is the fracture? The fracture is almost basis, uh, near the trochanter. It's almost like a trochanteric fracture. So what is the best implant here? Any further investigations? Yes, you need a traction internal rotation view. Look at the traction internal rotation view, so vertical. So in these kind of fractures, what should be your treatment of choice? So anyhow, here the surgeon decided to put in a uh, uh, derotation screw and a DHS, immediate post-op. So after two weeks, the patient developed fever, delirium, ACU, left hip joint, USG was done, some collection developed in the hip joint. Post, they did a deprivement, the trauma surgeon, after one month, he did a deprivement for the patient because he had a collection in the hip. So he did deprivement, four months post fixation, this is what happened. So the joint was deprived and then now it has got subluxed. The joint started subluxating, soft tissue damage, so much happened. So then finally the patient underwent uh, implant removal and then a cement spacer because of the collection ones, some blood parameters also. This is a situation where you should not go and do a implant removal and THR. Already one deprivement was done for infection. So better to do a two stage. So here the implant was removed, a cement spacer was put, culture was sent and that turned out to be a E. coli which was treated with antibiotics, two weeks of IV and four weeks of oral and a four months post cement spacer once CRP was uh, down and the total count was under control, underwent a uncemented total hip replacement. Again, a distal loading, uh, titanium stem and a hemispherical cup. So this case, 51 year old male, undisplaced neck of femur fracture. What, is, what fracture is this? This fracture is a valgus impacted fracture. So even though the patient is 51 year old male, this is a valgus impacted fracture. So what is the uh, line of man, how to treat? So this case needs a proper lateral view without taking a traction X-ray. You have to take a lateral X-ray and see whether the reduction is okay. Then counsel the patient, then take the patient to the theater under the C arm, make sure not giving too much of traction or rotation. Go ahead and see whether the fracture is very stable. And then if it is stable and a valgus impacted, just do a cancellous screw fixation, let it let it unite or even if it doesn't unite, let it develop an AVN maybe two years, three years down the lane and then you can do a THR. But what the surgeon did, surgeon did a uh, conservative management. He said just like that told the patient, wait. Again, the patient was not able to walk and had a fall, then developed a displaced neck of femur fracture, DHS with derotation. Three weeks later, he came. Two months, it failed. Again. So, we have to be very, very careful. DHS with derotation screw is not the solution for every single fracture of the hip. 
so that part we have to be very clear and if you are also a trauma surgeon you need to know what is the uh, best implant to use for these kind of fractures so again this got failed so once this is failed obviously it is thr so you, you, no way this can be refixed no way you can do an osteotomy see the head see the neck so you has to be fixed blood parameters normal so the implant was removed and then distal loading stem the key point here is again this prophylactic wiring so always don't remember uh, always remember do, uh, not to uh, forget that you have to use this prophylactic wirings around the dhs screw uh, removed area where there will be a very big hole so do a prophylactic wiring in couple of places like that because a lot of screws also was removed and then do a distal loading all these kind of cases just a 190 stem should be enough Uh, titanium stem and uncemented hemispherical third generation cup so this is again a one year follow up so two years follow up x ray so patient is doing well so here the key thing is you regain the length you gain the offset and then do a uncemented regular uh, uncemented thr with the distal loading stem look at the point here is look at these x rays so don't think that this patient will need a dual mobility majority of the time 99% of the time you will not need a dual mobility at all no way you will need a dual mobility only thing is you have to get your offset correct if you get your offset correct you are uh, you will not need so you should not think any post traumatic situation did you see any dual mobility case in my all these cases with all those complex cases no you don't need at all so don't use don't think dual mobility is again a one stop solution for every trauma situation no you don't need at all so here you have to get your offset correct length correct then you address the issues of using a titanium distal loading stem everything will be all right so this would be the last case we then we'll okay right we'll discuss okay. a few points and then we'll get to cases okay right done so this is again 28 year old underwent a uh, neck of femur fracture then intramedullary nailing tibia nailing so avn you have to remove the screws so there just an, one interesting case here this case so here the problem was the i was not able to remove the implant at all it was really jam packed so you need to have all the hooks and everything so if you look at the uh, femur so in this uh, the femur the medullary canal is so narrow even though the implant is so prominent so you have to be prepared so much of implant instruments i had to open and then this much of uh, trace was opened and finally if you see so that uh, implant was like slotted it was not a uh, rounded it was slotted uh, external clock red uh, intramedullary nail because of that uh, we had to uh, uh, struggle a bit to, to remove that then finally underwent a uh, primary hip replacement so in conclusion an accurate and careful preoperative template can result in a balanced hip reconstruction by correcting the length and restoring the offset so as a surgeon you should to uh, choose the implants which has given good results with good evidence don't try to use too much of implants too much of companies too much of systems always try to use whichever is you are comfortable with and which gives good uh, outcome and also the your entire team should know routinely what implants and instruments you are using thank you thank you sir for for a, for quite an exhaustive uh, case presentation wonderful cases i must say uh, sir a few points uh, that 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 come to mind uh, in 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 uh, routine young surgeons who are doing arthroplasty is if you have a failed pfn mm. so you've got a short pfn mm. we've seen that you've used distal uh, loading uh, wagner type of uh, titanium stems tapered mm. stems mm. uh, for cost constraints or whatever uh, would you still recommend using conventional cemented stems as an easy bail out uh, in in old osteoporotic patients i i i give you one good calculation you know the the wagner stem is now you you can get it for 50 55000 maximum 60000 a wagner stem okay and in a post traumatic situation most of the time these patients are all not that old enough okay nowadays 55 60 you encounter this problem 
okay a cemented hip your cemented system you are using it for uh, getting it for 30000 okay and in a post traumatic situation with all the screw holes here and there you are not going to get a very good cementing technique because that screw is going to leak the cement and then nowadays the cementing technique is also not properly followed and finally you end up having a compromised uh, hip replacement okay the chances of failure in that situation is very high because in a cemented hip it is very difficult to get your offset correct so that also chances of failure just imagine if uh, that case fails how much big a difficulty to revise it with the eto removal and then putting in a distal loading stem whereas nowadays just extra 25000 i don't think it will be a very big deal the affordability should not come in play in these kind of revision situations where you have to counsel the patient when the patient is able to spend at least 500 rupees to 1000 rupees a week for his internet mobile internet he should be able to spend 25000 extra to have a very good titanium distal loading short distal loading stem to achieve a good result so whenever you have a femoral bow hmm. in, uh, in in these type of patients and that's where uh, the conventional uncemented stems fail because they tend to uh, hitch the lateral cortex and therefore that's the commonest reason to undersize in those particular patients would you still do an eto and put it in a long stem or no. would you do a cement most stem? yeah good very good question i'll say most of the situations in those kind of situations always try to use a 190 stem the if you try to use a 240 225 that is where the problem comes the tip goes and hitches otherwise if you are using if you are going to use if the problem is very much in the diaphyseal region use a longer stem with a bowed stem whereas try if you are using a shorter stem 190 stem use a thicker stem so that will give you a good fixation rather than trying to get a false fixation with a at the lateral cortex so avoid either you have to bypass the bowing or you have to stop it before the bowing starts post traumatic uh, cups that you use uncemented mm -hmm. you see usually after 6 to 8 months or a year you see a small little loosened zone in the superior zone as you've seen yeah that that is uh, yeah go ahead sorry uh, yeah so so the the whole question is uh, it is not a thing to worry but that's what i wanted to point out if, if you can shed some light on that definitely see because that is where that is where you have to if you are having a pax whenever a patient comes for the follow up you see that x ray just take the 6 months previous x ray look at the pax just compare it next to each other you will see not much of any progression it will stop at one point of time only thing is make sure patient's vitamin d is good and if the vitamin d is good level give him one course of alendronate for 3 months one course of 3 months of alendronate and then again stop for 3 months and again another 3 months that will improve his bone quality good point how do you mobilize these patients you have to load him see that is where you are using an uncemented stem good fixation stable fixation rigid fixation titanium stem and the third generation uncemented porous cup partial weight bearing if if you are using lot of screws and if you think it bone is soft then two weeks of toe touch then four weeks of partial weight bearing so six weeks guarded with the walker support and next one month full weight bearing with walker support you load the patient at the same time give some support so two months later then you can put him on an elbow crutch based on the fracture uh, fixation uh, part but you the thing is it goes hand in hand load the patient support the patient don't allow him to walk without any support he will start driving two wheelers so uh, we have seen that you have used the reviton stem uh, what is not reviton which one the, uh, in in some of your cases you have used the the smith and nephew stems redap uh, that is redap redap okay yeah. so redap redap stems mm -hmm. right that's redap stem 
Hmm. What is the role of uh, modular stems uh, like Arcos? Modular, or... majority of the time, you don't need a modular stem. Okay. In a very, very complex situations, very, very complex bone loss situations, proximal femoral bone loss situations, where you need to, you don't have your trochanter at all, where you will need to put in the distal portion uh, of the modular stem, and then you have to build your proximal portion. In those situations, you can use a modular stem. But otherwise, a monoblock titanium stem. This redap stem is a monoblock stem. It's yes, not it's a modular, modular stem. Yeah, it's not a modular. The big advantage with this redap stem is it comes both in a prime regular and high offset stems. Right. right. Hmm. So uh, I have a question. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. You can ask, please. Uh, sir, I saw in some cases you have not used any screws at all in the acetabulum, while in some cases you have used it. So, how do you decide um, as to in which cases, in revision scenario especially, in which yeah. cases you will, you will use screws? It's actually very, uh, very, very uh, simple. You get a good anteroposterior fixation. Okay, in your in your trial, you try to rotate the cup. Okay. If you rotate the cup and if the cup is not rotating, that means you have got a good fixation in the anteroposterior direction. In that situation, that is two points. The third point is your dome fixation. In your dome fixation, if you have already got a good dome fixation, you cannot toggle the cup like that. You cannot move the cup in this situation. Then you don't need a cup screw at all. That means all the three places you have got a good rigid fixation. So if you see, if I do, I have not used a screw, that means the fixation is very good. But in some situations, even though I might not have any toggling thing, if the bone is soft, if I feel the bone is soft, I will add one, two screws. But I, my first choice will be not to add the screw. And another, another trip I will tell you, in post-traumatic situations where Anup also felt uh, asked about that superior dome, some lysis and all. In those kind of soft situation where you feel there is bone loss, particularly the screws will go and erode the dome. In those situations, there will be little bit of uncoverage of your cup. In those situations, you can add some two screws. What is that the screw will do? Your the screw the screw will not by uh, substitute for the anteroposterior uh, fixation, but it will pull the cup superiorly nicely and it will go and get fixed it so that situation make sure you are getting the screws into the ilium that is into your column nicely not into the wall into the column so that will make the cup very rigid so what is the role of mars mri and uh, or rather pet in i don't take at all i don't take at all don't do in a post traumatic see here no case I have taken a PET CT. PET CT is again overused nowadays. Don't do PET CT at all in these kind of situations. Don't need to do any aspirations if the blood parameters are okay. Actually, I wanted to show one more case. Actually, that case came last week. That boy, young boy, underwent a DHS for a neck of femur fracture, but he has got a very subtle infection around the screw areas. He's, he's diabetic. So I have posted him for an implant removal coming week because it was very obvious. I am planning to do a two-stage. Only if it is very obvious, you can go ahead and do a uh, two-stage. But otherwise, there is no role for MRI, no role for PET scan to rule out infection in a post-traumatic situation. But also remember to counsel the patient because sometimes perioperatively, if your gut feeling says, oh, this doubtful infection, then just remove the implants. Don't think that, oh, two more, one more surgery. Don't worry. Because the, if the inf you are avoiding infection, you are saving so many lakhs for the patient. So just remove the implant, cure it nicely, take a lot of tissues for cultures, multiple places, just uh, close the wash thoroughly, close the wound and come. And then once the culture report comes, extended culture report comes, four weeks later, go ahead and do a hip replacement. When can we earliest do a total hip in an acetabular fracture? There is no point, no point, uh, no thing called earliest. If the acetabulum fracture is amenable for fixation, 
the first choice should be fixation there are some surgeons now they say acute uh, thrs in acute fractures but the results are not good so so much of you have to make the patient partial weight bearing totage guarded weight why all these things just two things in this if the fracture is so comminuted don't even touch it allow it to heal by itself let it go for some sort of union there Three months later or six months later, you can go ahead and do a THR. Otherwise, if there is a fracture which needs fixation, go ahead and do a fixation. Keep the fixation minimal. Don't try to do fancy plates and screws. Allow the fracture to heal. Let the patient develop an arthritis two years later, three years later. That time you can do a THR. Any traumatic situation, whether it is a neck or femur fracture, femoral head fracture, astablum fracture. If you do a THR, the chances of infection is high, the mor morbidity is high, and then if you are going to do in a posterior approach, the chance of dislocation is also high. So all those things can be avoided if you are doing a THR at a later date. Some situation like Pipkin's type 5, where the head is completely shattered, yes, there is no other option. You can go ahead and do a THR. And if there is an, that time, if there is a posterior wall fracture, put a plate and then do a THR. So when will you use a titanium uh, augment uh, in an 85 year old osteoporotic female? Would you still try and use a, a, a butterfly augment or will you preferably yeah. use cement? See, if you are 85 year old, 85 year old, if you are going ahead and doing a THR for with a bone loss situation, that means the patient is physiologically active. Okay. Otherwise, you wouldn't uh, suggest a THR for that patient. Okay. So, THR, already if you have decided a THR, you have to get a good stable fixation, good construct you have to have. So, whether 85 or 65, you have to address the bone loss. So, augment is a very good option. In that situation, going ahead, ahead and doing a, a bone grafting, then screws is not ideal. Do a augment, and if you are able to get a good uh, cemented uh, fixation, sorry, uncemented top, good. But if 85 year old, if it is very osteoporotic, don't hesitate to do a lot of bone grafting, impaction grafting, and do a cemented top. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So, in which cases would you prefer a cemented versus a uh, non cemented cup after uh, doing the bone grafting medium? Bone grafting in a protrusio, you are asking in a protrusio case, uh, almost the always the first choice should be an uncemented cup, particularly in a protrusio, particularly in a protrusio, because the protrusio can be a divergent type or a convergent type. Okay, so accordingly, you have to ream, accordingly, you have to do the bone grafting, and in fact, in these situations, it is easier to get in an uncemented cup rather than a cemented cup. Because you are getting, because you need to lateralize. So the cup will sit very nicely in your anteroposterior, in your column, nicely. So that way, uncemented should be the first choice. I will always prefer an uncemented cup. None of these patients have uh, failed ITs. You have you've, uh, thought of wiring. Usually, what happens is the flare of the GT covers up, uh, which prevents the entry of the Wagner SL or, or the straight stem that we put in. So you have some kind of fibrous mobility at the GT. Would you not wire them post-operatively? Not, see, uh, not always you need to wire it. What I will do is, what I use is, I use an etibon. See, because you try to put in so much of metal, that SS wire also, if it rubs on the uh, femoral stem, that will cause metallosis. The chances of small metal uh, debris there. So what I do is, if you don't see a metal there in the trochanteric region, I would have used ethibon. That gives excellent result. And this Wagner stem has got two holes. Yeah. So what you should do is, what you should do is you have to, before inserting the stem, you have to take two, if you open one ethibond pack, you will have five uh, uh, sets of needles. So you take two sets, you take uh, into that two uh, holes and then put a, a small artery clamp and then leave it and then insert the stem. The holes will almost go inside, but the wire will be outside. With the needle, pull the trochanter and if you are getting your offset correct, 
that all those abductors will fall in place. So you, that situation, you just need to wire it with that ethy bond and tighten it. It will all stay in place. Uh, sir, uh, have you ended up using a cup cage construct in any of these cases uh, for a post acetabular, you know, where discontinuity is See, remember, or... remember again, in India, a cup cage construct is only theoretical. It is, you uh, just tell me which company has got a cup cage construct. No. So, cup cage construct is almost like a customizable in Indian scenario. Our patients sizes are very, very small. All those cup cage construct are all for Caucasian patients. Zimmer has got some cup cage construct, but does it, they doesn't have it in India. So, see, surgeons like, like for example, Rajesh Malgotra and all, they use cup cage construct, but all customized. So, majority of the time, again, cup cage construct is not that easy to do it here. We don't have the correct sizes. And you don't need also. Why? The cup cage construct if you are having a pelvic discontinuity, you address the pelvic discontinuity and then you can majority of the time again, you can get away with your highly porous cups like the tantalum TM cups and then augments all with screws and then otherwise a distraction technique. But in spite of that, if you are planning for a cup cage sensor, you have to go for something like a Bushnider cage where you will have a option of two screws into the ischium. Always remember when you are using a Bushnader cage, you have to get in some two screws into the ischium and then screws up. So, in the, those kind of situations are okay. The favorite bailout options in a 4 foot 8 inch or a 5 footer, uh, wherein the smallest Wagner goes difficult. You you're not able to hammer it in. Which one? Which one? I didn't get What is your bailout option? Hmm. We can't put in the smallest Wagner. Wagner. Okay. Smallest Wagner, if you are not able to put in, that means that means your size 14 is not going. Wagner's okay. smallest size is 14. 14. The redap, redap stem starts from size 13. And uh, some uh, one company, Madler uh, system company, the, the MRP Titan starts from 12. So, that is where your pre-operative templating helps properly you are planning. But I will tell you one thing. In, in uh, most of the revision situations, it will be easy enough to, it is, if you gently start reaming, you have to use your flexible reamers starting from 8. So, in this kind of tight situation, start from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, till 14, you use the flexible reamers. Put in a guide wire and the, ream, the flexible reamers. Till 14, you will be gently. Only thing is you should not force it. Gently ream, ream, ream. And then you use your 14 size Wagner rasp. And that also don't use in the power. Use in the handle, T handle. Gently, gently, gently. Only thing is you have to spend time. You will be able to get in your 14. Because that Wagner stem is, Wagner stem is, fixation is in the spines. Okay, it's not a cylindrical uh, uh, solution kind of solid stem. So, you will be able to get in. Your tips to break down the pedestal? Pedestal, yes. Oh, you are getting. You are asking very good questions, Anup. Uh, that means uh, this is almost like uh, we are all inside the theater now. <laughs> that So, what I, I always have two things for that. One is I use the Siam and then I have a long drill bit starting from 6 mm and then 8 mm drill bit specifically for that. So, I take that drill bit. It is quite long enough, but I will use the C arm and gently, 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 I will make holes into that. So, multiple holes, but I will make sure I am not breaching the cortex. That is the most key. Then, don't completely try to remove it. Make multiple drill holes and then I will take my flexible reamer. Mm -hmm. Then I will use it. So, the flexible remal advantage is that it will not break the cortex. It will always try to go intramedullary only. Right. So, because I have already made multiple drills in that pedestal, that flexible remal will take care. Great. 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 Can I speak back on the basis? Yes. Uh, so, I have one question. Please. Uh, so, sometimes now when we have a um, uh, intramedullary short device, hmm. it 
usually sometimes lands on one or the other side of the cortex and then when we try to rasp it also goes kind of in the same false passage which one i am i intramedullary device means what you are telling uh, uh, like if it long, if you have used a short pfn mm -hmm. so sometimes uh, if the, if it's a long standing pfn then mm -hmm. it goes to one side of the cortex and it thins out that cortex ah see again, now if you want to put uh, and once we start rasping actually now it goes into the same false passage and there is a very high chance that it might perforate yeah. so, so that's what this is almost similar to what i said now for the pedestrian oh. no yeah almost like that once it is perfor almost perforating one side the other side is thick that means so that is like a pedestal the other side so always don't hesitate to use the cm whenever you are seeing a case like that and then you are going for a thr don't hesitate to have the cm inside draped ready take the cm in that situation what you should do is you take a small drill bit enter the uh, pedestal that thicker area then take a guide wire what you use it for your reaming take a guide wire bang it inside check it under the cm whether it has crossed that area after that it is straight forward use a uh, flexible reamer that will not go breach anywhere use the flexible reamer over the guide wire keep reaming it once the canal is nicely opened then remember again when you are going to put your original stem or the trial check under the cm thank you sir remember always in orthopedics whenever there is a resistance whether you are doing a trauma whether you are doing a hip uh, arthroplasty or spine or anything whether whenever there is a resistance that means you have to stop there what you should do after stopping check why there is a resistance check under the cm don't hesitate to use the cm whenever it is you feel there is something is not <clears throat> we move on with the cases dr ankur uh, you would want to present the first we can't hear you ankur yeah can, uh, am i audible yes you are uh, good evening all thank you for inviting mm -hmm. me to uh, present this case so yeah can you see my screen yep okay just hold yeah so she is a 55 year old female a uh, known case of rheumatoid arthritis she was having rheumatoid arthritis in all the four joints when she came to me she was bedridden and non ambulatory three joints were operated by me in the single sitting both knees and uh, one hip here i am discussing about the right hip uh, when she came up to me she was having a protrusion in the right hip with the inferior pubic rami fracture as well as anterior column fracture uh, So this is the pre-op X-rays. So you can appreciate there is anterior column fracture uh, along with inferior pubic rami fracture. So these were the CT scan pictures. So as I already operated her uh, three joints, so in this case, I thought of bringing a vascular surgeon, and uh, he did a anterior column plating. Then uh, I waited for around three months, gave. Uh, all teriprotides and other uh, medicines for improving his bone den uh, her bone density and then i did a thr and while doing the thr i when i did a opposite thr i uh, kept a head as well so i did a bone graft in this case so uh, after doing a thr since i did a bone graft uh, i didn't allow her to bear the uh, bear the weight and uh, post 2 months i did toe touch and subsequently partial weight bear so after 3 months i found this x ray which shows that the head is sinking so the screws were broken uh, probably the fracture had not healed so uh, i just want uh, this case in open for discussion and i'll further proceed 
uh, uncle can i can we see your that x ray little bigger like um, maybe you have in the ppt you have put a very small x ray post op um, pre op and post op hold on so just hold on yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. can you see sir yeah okay she was a post op how old is this patient sir she was uh, she when she came to me she was 58 years old and uh, uh, she she was already uh, bedridden she there was a history of trivial trauma not a frank trauma she just like you know side turning and all mm -hmm. and she was not able to walk this is a divergent uh, protrusion if i if i if i may say so it's basically um, even if we have a cup in it has a tendency to go in that's one thing that that comes out after seeing this x ray sir what is your 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 idea no, a couple of things see uh, it's uh, it's not a very uh, simple thing i have seen this in in rheumatoid this is very very common okay so this is uh, very common in rheumatoid uh, females patients who are all on steroids they have this uh, spontaneous fractures of the acetabulum and they very quickly they develop they go in for all these kind of protrusions and all those things see in this case retrospectively it is easy to comment but still since we are discussing retrospectively uh, first point is she is a rheumatoid very very uh, uh, soft around the acetabulum region no obvious trauma trivial thing fracture so this is a situation where i wouldn't go and do a plating so why why no plating here because it's one it's the anterior column so most many a times your anterior column you don't need to fix it okay even in a young adult if you see anterior column alone fracture you can leave it for some time so the in a rheumatoid female like this you are going and fixing it that means what the two your anterior column fixation it needs a lot of soft tissue dissection so you are disturbing the biology there so then you are putting in a plate the chance of non union is high now so that is what has happened here first is that second i will if you have fixed it why you went ahead and did three months you should have allowed it for more time okay so that is the second point so if it was me i wouldn't have fixed the column i would have allowed it to heal for some time wait and see how it happens so sometimes you will see more fractures like around that region so you cannot keep on going and plating that so this is a case where you need to allow it for some time do the metabolic workup make uh, make sure whether she is on steroids or all the this uh, disease modifying drugs how she is responding all those things and then then you had to go and do and it's then it's 10:30 when you are going to do you have to do a very very highly porous cups like something like a gripshan sort of cups so that time you have to make sure loading the patient two months of not loading will again cause problems so at this stage you should you should not touch you should not have touched the hip right it is not it is not should not touch but it is not indicated an anterior column fracture alone for going ahead and doing a plating so much of big plate inside not needed so you should you should have waited i will i will say maybe uh, and that's why i told it's easy to comment uh, uh, retrospectively Uh, if it has, if it had not had these all these problems, and if it had survived without loosening, then everybody will say, yeah, that is the right way of treating it. But putting an anterior column alone in this kind of situation, I will not. That too. See, the point here is there was no big trauma. It was only a trivial, not even a trivial fall. Yes. So remember, patients, rheumatoid patients on DMRD steroids, they just turn like that. with uh, they will have trochanteric fracture or these kind of fractures because uh, i also thought of uh, keeping a cage as well but as uh, sir rightly said indian population have a small acetabulum the other side i did a 46 bentham cup so i was sure i can't use a cage here also so another thing remember remember 46 is not actually a bentham cup 
Bantam comes are 38, 40, and 42. These three are called Bantam comes. Okay. In 46, you don't get a uh, highly porous Gribschen cup. Gribschen cups start from 48. Okay, so this is where this is where a cup, something like a, a tantalum coated cups or a Gribschen kind of cups is necessary. First thing. Second thing is these kind of cases you should use multiple multi hole cup and try to put in some inferior screws also, lower screws also. Very very osteoporotic cases. So yeah. So what did you do now? So yeah. So at first I did plating, then THR, and then it failed. So again, she landed up me. So now I did all the, I thought to rule out any infection. Aspirate was also negative. So what I did is now I did a TMR scup. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, with a distraction technique. So this is the post-op x-rays and it's been two years now. She's doing fine. Mm -hmm. So, so in, that's why I said in these kind of situations, no, the tantalum coating is, is helps a lot. Yes, sir. Uh, helps uh, really a lot. Uh, so see that uh, another thing is, Whenever you are using a highly porous cup like this, remember to load the patient. Unless you load, bone will not uh, grow. Okay. Mm, now that well managed, this is good. Yeah. Okay. So this was interesting. Thank you. Can I present one more case? It's a very interesting case. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Yeah, it's a 67 year old male. He had come come to me with right hip pains in seven years. He had a history of trauma 30 years back. He's a very big, bulky guy, weight above 100 kgs. So he developed a post-traumatic estabular arthritis. And this is this was his x-rays. Probably pubic diastasis was also there at that point of time. So yeah, go on. Yeah. So these are his CT images. Yeah. So this case is open for discussion. Like it's a very big estabulum and uh, the templating came out to be around 62 was the size of the estabulum. Rajkumar sir, your thoughts on this? 62, huh? okay, show me the uh, x-ray. I'll just show you. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. Sixty-two. Yeah. That's he has counted the defect also. So it's clear. <laughs> okay. Almost. So lateral defect. Yeah. Lateral okay. Defect. Yeah, it doesn't uh, because if you look at the opposite side, it doesn't look like it's more of more of like a uh, migration uh, and like some uh, migration both superiorly and uh, medially, and there is a lot of inferior osteophytes also there. So yes, in this situation. Even though you can do a lot of CTs and everything, two important points. One is you need to see perioperatively how much of anterior and posterior walls are there. If the that is where you are going to get your good fixation. So based on the walls, if you are able to manage with the jumbo cup, you don't need an augment. Yes, sir. Okay. So if your wall is not good, then you might need, you cannot put a jumbo cup, then you need to put a smaller cup and then use an augment. Otherwise, if you are not able to get in a jumbo cup, then no need of an augment. So it all depends how we are going to ream, how we are going to place your cup. Yes. So yeah, the walls were okay. Uh, these were the challenges like large astrobulum, lots of sclerosis was there inside and obesity definitely. So this was this post of x-ray. So I did use a, you know, a gription large cup. Can you see the x-ray? Yeah, we can. We can. Yeah. So, and to avoid, I thought a lot of bone was there outside. So I did give him some uh, endocap, uh, endomethacines to avoid any heterotropic ossification in this case also. So this is the two-year post of x-ray. He's doing fine now. Mm. Those were my two of my cases. Thank you so much. Good. Good. Good, work. Good cases. Thank you. Dr. Jayesh? Yeah. So, um, I will be I'm going to, need to stop sharing your screen. Yeah. So, I will be sharing cases which have already been operated. So, one case I have been, I have done 
there are two cases from someone else who have a complication so i am just going to show those cases also go ahead josh yeah uh, can you see my screen yep yes yes so a uh, 55 year old female she had a history of uh, fall with three cc screws fixation for it she neck fracture done 6 months ago her range of motion was right now restricted because there is a non union at the fracture and this backing out of the screws so uh, the pre op work up uh, included uh, ruling out infection by doing cbc asr crp x rays were done and then uh, for any such revision case you have to plan your inventory you have to have an implant removal set uh you have to have a bur because when we remove these screws especially long standing screws then there can be sclerosis around the entry area which might prevent mm-hmm. the entry of your uh, uh femoral component uh you have to keep long stems ready as if it were defective there is anything then you can use bone grafts for the same uh cables as sir has already said if you are using a uh, if there is a intramedullary or a, well, a plate for the screws bone grafts and you have to template as to which is the smallest size which can go in this case so this is was a very uh, and other operative considerations which were like we have to dislocate the head with the implant in c2 otherwise there is a chance that you might uh, fracture through the uh, holes of the implants then if there is long standing tissue atrophy you have to ream with care to prevent protrusion in the acetabular side use burr to create stem entry and canal centralization if there is sclerotic bone of the previous surgery if it uh, uh, it comes in between your implant positioning use cemented process if there is a significant femoral cortex in because uncemented process sometimes can cause a blow out and a periprosthetic fracture and bypass stress rises by using bone graft and using long steps so this was the uh, this was a case with a failed uh, uh, transcervical neck femur fracture it looks like the screws even have not penetrated the head and acetabulum was normal and uh, we landed doing up a standard total hip replacement for this patient uh, we did not have to use any burrs or anything because this was just 6 months old i'll come to my next case this is uh, one of the complication cases which is someone else had done so a 71 year old uh, uh, male with a neck femur fracture 20 years ago uh, with uh, he has been walking on this for a long time but now he has come to us for surgery because of increased pain his infection profile is negative and uh, so the considerations were soft osteoporotic acetabulum this shortening and bone go- overgrowth over the hardware so this is the pre op x ray and because the bone was soft uh, on the acetabular side when we reamed it created a little bit of protrusion but uh, we were able to put in a small uh, acetabulum which was uh, well fixing over there so any uh, comments regarding the same okay this is this is purely the problem with the reaming correct sir uh, so see always uh, remember the see the if you see the acetabulum uh, if you see there is so much of like osteophytes and everything the head is resorbed and some part of cartilage everything here this is a area so we have to try to put in the cup in this region and these kind of situation the bone will be soft very very soft because lo- very long period of time there is no loading in this area there is no head right. at all so the whole acetabulum will be very soft so You, will, you won't even realize that the acetabulum has gone you have reamed so much only in the post operative x ray you will see this yes. so you have to be very careful so this is where you have to check just to do one or two reaming place the cup the smallest cup available trial cup and check again in the cm check check multiple times and just ream one or two and the concept of taking a smallest reamer and then gently enlarging it doesn't apply you have to make sure Ream only one or two or three sizes maximum, and then get in a good cup. That should be the most important thing. That so is what I think my friend had told me that the moment he uses use the first reamer, it just uh, went inside uh, directly. Yeah, because there is no loading here. Correct. Right. 
soft sir if you get this kind of a situation uh, and you see it while you are doing the surgery how would you bail out during surgery uh, during surgery then uh, in this case then you have to use something like even a anti protrusion ring lock like anything something like that if you if you have a it situation and if it is very unstable it all depends sometimes the cup will go and sit in the column somewhere yes. in the if the posterior column is intact if you have this not reamed the posterior column and then the cup will sit in the column and there you have to get your screws proper screws then uh, it will it will survive so that should not be a problem but you have to be little guarded i'll uh, be showing one more complication uh, this is a 62 year old male operated with a pfn 7 months ago the implant had cut out and the intestine profile was negative so this is his uh, pre op x ray <laughs> so in prop when they uh, when they, uh, they were operating they had found the acetabular defect which they uh, packed with bone grafts the cup went in nicely but on the femoral side when they started uh, um, uh, uh, using the broach at the final broach they realized that they had heard a crack so then they got a cm and then they realized they had a periprosthetic fracture so i don't have intraop images so this is the final uh, x ray of the patient in which you can see that uh, the through one of the screw holes they had a fracture and then at the tip also they had a fracture over here so can you they, can you show the pre op pre op x ray yes sir Hmm. Why? Why at all they used such a long stem? Uh, so I don't know, sir. They, ah, I, so I the issue is there. Correct. As you said, that one ninety stem should have been good enough. More than enough. When you just use a longer stem, you just need to cross the uh, screw hole. That's all. Just need to cross the tool. And most of the time, you just need your one ninety st titanium stem. Correct. That is enough. at the maximum so they have used a very long stem and they have that is why they had uh, the issues of all these things they also since because they have used bigger stems and uh, because of all these things okay fracture mm. uh, in these cases the uh, since the bone is now very thin Do you think that uh, you should use the thickest stem or the first stem which gives you uh, stability should be the one which should be used? See, the whole concept is you try to use the shortest stem in your distal loading stem. So the all whether you are using a short stem or a long stem, it is a distal loading stem. So your uh, loading should happen in one area a hold should happen in one area wherever you are getting that area should be the loading area so that means what you are bypassing the metaphyseal region your load will go to the diaphyseal region metaphy in that way the um, bony integration happens in that region so your concept should not be trying to use a longer stem trying to think that the longer stem will give good stability no so whichever area the stem is length is adequate that length of stem you have to get a good scratch fit that good fixation so that means what you if you are if you are think that the length of the stem 190 is enough then you have to get in make sure that you are getting a 190 stem that means what whether it is a 16 size or 18 size or a 19 size that proper reaming accordingly rasping has to be the tricks that has to be the crux in just because you are using a 190 stem and just because okay that day rashmar sir sold bigger stem no that means you cannot put a 20 190 into 20 and trying to blow out the proximal femur area so that also not correct so if you are trying to get in make sure that your rasping and your stability uh, stable fixation is matching so that means what you should know the system well 
because you need to know wagner stem means what length you are going to get inside what length you have to ream and what length what size of the stem you have to select so all those things you have to know the system well it's not that simple so it you by practice it comes right sir second question i wanted to ask should the fixation which has been done now uh, extended a little bit longer yeah uh, the already already from up they have put a very long stem from down you cannot keep putting a bigger stem this is enough this should be okay see the good thing here is they have identified the fracture on table itself and they immediately they have plated it that is good most of the time you know what will happen these kind of distal uh, fracture this is almost like a type c fracture these fractures are all uh, goes unnoticed and immediate post operative period when the patient starts weight bearing no like starts standing in a walker that time uh, the patient will uh, see the uh, pain and then they will take an x ray and identify so it is good that they have identified and they have addressed it thank you sir good very nice cases here yeah. yeah good so i i guess uh, it it's time for for closure i thank you dr rajkumar sir for the wonderful tips and tricks and 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 uh, wonderful cases that you have shared it's almost years and decades of uh, your experience that we got to see in a glimpse <laughs> Sir, I I hope it was some way or the other. It is like for everybody. Even I I learned from all those cases what they have showed. So it is like almost like I always keep telling, share your knowledge and then uh, keep uh, learning from one another. That is how it is. Sure, sure. Really so appreciate your time. And it was a good program actually. Actually, I should thank uh, you and Ashok. The thank man you very name. much, sir. Yeah, yeah. Excellent session. Yeah, yeah. hope uh, sorry for the starting uh, hitch because of my uh, missing laptop i hope uh, that was not a... oh, no no problem sir we could lay down the foundation and start the discussion so. okay right right okay. thank you thank right, you sir. everyone thanks a lot we'll also thank like you. to thank dr jay and the presenters dr ankur and dr jayesh for wonderful thank cases for inviting us very good case very good case right okay now. so we call it a day yep we'll the next time mm Thank is is dinner is dinner ashok is arranging some dinner now <laughs> he send you some coupons <laughs> <laughs> right okay.